Solving it with radicals, but now we know that radicals are not just square roots, right? We can have any number in front of that radical and make it any root. So, David, what are you doing? What are you doing? Checking what? No! <laughs> David, if I asked you what that meant, what would you tell me? What's that called? What's that? Uh, the square root. And so there's an imaginary what outside that radical. We're sitting. What number? Two. Why is it two? That's square root. It's looking for something times itself twice to find this. Okay. And we also talked about some other roots. That number could be three, right? Four, five, anything. It doesn't matter. It can be anything. That just tells us how many times to multiply the number together. We all good on that? So when I move into solving, if I have something like this, how do I solve that for x? In other words, how do I get rid of the exponent of 2? Square root. Square root. Yeah. Yes. All right, so what I'm getting at is the opposite of square is square root, right? That's what cancels it out. And knowing now what you know that there's an imaginary two here, what if I extend this concept just a little bit and say, well, how would I get rid of an exponent of, say, three? Cube root. Cube root. It is still five, David. You're absolutely right. Okay. But what I'm getting at with this is that opposite operations, meaning what you need to do to cancel something out, the opposite of a squared is a square root. The opposite of a cube is a cube root. This is what, they cancel each other out. <laughs> you have to have a scientific calculator to be able to do this, okay? But I want to show you, and John made a good point, well, I don't know if it's a good point, but John made the point of, he could just look at this and tell that it was supposed to be five, right? But what if it wasn't a number here that it made sense that you couldn't just look at it and tell what the answer was? In other words, it was a decimal. Because, you know, we can take the square roots of lots of numbers. Everything's not a perfect square, right? So, or a perfect cube. That's right. So what if I wanted to, you know, we did the square root this way, right? That's the second root. Say, uh, 15. But what if I wanted to do the third root of 15? Let's do third root of 15. I'm going to show you how to do it, so follow along on your calculator because you'll, um, you'll have these kind on your homework and your test. <clears throat> All right. To put this on the calculator, the first thing we have to do is tell it what root we need it to be. Okay, so I'm going to tell it I want the third root and then I'm going to go into math <coughs> and look at option number four. Actually, option number five, I apologize. Number five says X root. Hit enter. So now it's letting me do the third root of any number. So the third root of 15 is 2.466. Does that make sense? Uh, 
There is no fraction for it. It's kind of like if I asked you to find the square root of 2. The square root of 2 is not a perfect square. Okay. It doesn't have it. It's a decimal. So, to find the root, if you don't have a calculator um, like this, okay, but you have one like this, or McKinley holds yours up, or like that, you can still do it, but what you have to do is you have to change it to an exponent. So rewind back to what we talked about yesterday with the sunshine, right? I could rewrite that as an exponent how? 15 to the what power? Third. One third, right? One third. There's an imaginary one here. Okay. So if you look at your calculator, um, he did fifth root of 12. So fifth root of 12 is the same thing as 12 to the what power? One fifth. So now you can do 12 raised to the, but you have to put it in parentheses, one divided by five. And you should get the same thing. What'd you do? Do you have an X root on there? Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. Does that make sense? So far, how to find the root on your calculator. All right, then let's do some solving. Remember when we solve, we solve in what order? Come on, y'all. Hurting my heart right now. How, how do you How do you know the order to solve? What's the order that you simplify things in? PEMDAS, right? Did you? I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So if you simplify in PEMDAS, then you solve using the opposite of that. Sad map. Okay? That's going to be key to solving these. All right? The new part here is that whenever you encounter an exponent, two, three, four, five, whatever, to get rid of it, you take that root. Okay? What? <laughs> he did not say shoot. Okay. Let's do an example. Let's do solve it for x. What do I need to do first? <laughs> Is there any addition or subtraction? We don't just go saw. <laughs> My job gets harder and harder every day. Okay. Is there any addition or subtraction being done to X? No. Move on to the next one. Is there any multiplication division? Yes. What's being done? Multiplication. Thank you, Cameron. How do I get rid of one half that's being multiplied? You could divide it by one half. What else could I do? Come on, y'all. You're right. That thing. Flip it. Multiply by the reciprocal because it's a fraction. Multiply both sides by 2 over 1. Right? Come on, y'all. This is what I'm teaching my 1A class right now. Solving equations. Algebra 1A. 1024. Okay? How about exponents? Yes. How do I get rid of that exponent? You do that little root fifth, root five, five root. I do it here, and I do it here. Now, I don't know about y'all. David probably knows. I don't know off the top of my head what number times itself five times gives me 1024. So I'm going to use my calculator 
And I'm going to do fifth root of 1024. No, you didn't. Remember, if you have a calculator that won't let you do an indicated root, then do 1024 and raise it to the 1 divided by 5. Yes, ma'am. You, you, you can raise it that way. You can do it that way. You don't have a calculator at all? Are you talking about just today? Oh, um, I, I got I got one you can borrow for today. All right. Um, Hayden, look on my desk right beside that red box there. And I think there's one sitting right there. There's one sitting right there. I actually have a... Is there not? Okay. Yeah, you can use that one. All right. Let's do another. Solve it for X. What do you do first? Divide by three. Divide by three. Um, three, six. Now what? Six. How do you get rid of that exponent? Six. That's right. That's right, John. That's right. That's right. That's right. I'm. <laughs> Y'all act so much alike. <laughs> I'm going to make this one a little bit harder because I'm going to put a parenthesis in it. Remember that sad map? So the thing of it is, is what comes last in sad map? Parentheses, right? Mm -hmm. So, ooh, what do I do first? Mm -hmm. That's right. Good job. I need to take care of this exponent first, so I'm going to do cubed root. Because even though there's subtraction in here, it's in the parentheses, and inside parentheses comes last. So, okay, this is gone, and it leaves me with x minus 2 over here, but I don't have any earthly idea what the cubed root of negative 14 is. Do you? Third root. Negative 2.41. Just round it off two decimal places. Did everybody get negative 2.41 for this? Let me make sure you can all, with whatever calculator you have, find various roots. We all okay? Maybe you did negative 14 to the one-third. All right. Is it solved for x? Why? Because you got an x. I got to add here. It's negative 0 0.41. Yes or no? Do we need to do another one? Wait, no. what? Never. Do another one. It's all the same way. It's just some of them have more steps than others. It's not hard. Let's do this one. Um, which one? Put the put the exponent in parentheses. So whenever you put it in there, which one are you doing? Okay. All right. Solve it. Come on. Come on, David. Come on. Thank you.
All right. David's going to work this one out for us. It might be on my desk. I mean, you can use your finger. You can use that on there. It's fine. I'll use this. All right. John's going to work out this one. You better do it right. Uh. Is that right? Is that right? What'd you do? Wait, what'd you do? No, no. Oh, crap. Parentheses are last. So what's outside of parentheses? I did this. This thing right here. That's what I did. That is right. Sad map. Look, if it's sad map. Oh, crap. I needed to add five to the other side first. Right? Right, 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 right. What's, uh, so listen, because this is... Guys, I didn't guys. see that in minus five there. I'm sorry. No, you know, it's okay. We all make mistakes. It's about. okay. But I want I want everybody to see that as we work through here, we're looking for addition subtraction outside of parentheses. Multiplication division outside of parentheses. Exponents outside of parentheses. Then we hit the inside of the parentheses and it all starts again. Let's uh, right. scroll down. <laughs> Never mind. How do I undo... Is that an undo? Yeah. Come on, John. Take it all day. It's okay. Oh, no, David. Yeah, David. Um. All right. Plus five. One hundred. A quarter. Now we do this. Right. That's right. And that leaves me with uh Um what's this? Can someone do this for me? I don't know how to put it in the calculator. Actually, I need to learn how to do it on that calculator because I don't have this type of calculator. Come on, Dave. You're demonstrating it for the past. This thing is just glitching. 100? 2.511 It's right though Oh sorry guys You de this little, this little bar is in the way. If you will stop that recording, because I'm sure the people are going to be 